Hey, let's go out in the front yard. I want to show you something. I'm washing some prints and this is the Desert Southwest. I think I've showed you guys this before, but uh, the way I wash prints out here is the little overflow line for my cooler. I have an evaporative cooler. So I have this overflow line that you use to freshen up the water in your cooler. I have to show you this a little bit more close up. I think uh, this might be the one that was shot at a slightly a greater exposure, but uh, this is a multi uh, multi grade resin coated paper done in my reversal process that I've been working on. Let me show you how I've been doing it. So my wife was wanting me to tell you that the reason why I have to rinse my prints outside under the tree is because she doesn't want us to waste water, and she's right running fresh drinking water down the drain when you're in the desert southwest doesn't make much sense considering how precious water is but hey man i think i have some pretty cool pretty cool pictures i'm really happy with the results let me show you the setup here so this is my patio room and uh, i have uh, my little underwood portable from 1930 set up on its tray table and I have the old speed graphic with the 135 millimeter f5.6 Fujinon lens. And um, because it's a fairly sh close in shot, I've had to measure the focal length using a little tape measure between the lens and the film plane. And then what I do is I have a little cheat sheet here that tells me for each lens and the f-stop numbers what the actual diameter of the aperture is and so you simply divide the actual focal length by whatever the diameter is of your aperture and you end up with the true f-stop which in my case with the experiments that I did today, the exposures I did today, they were about f6.8. I did one test, ISO 3, so it's about a 3 second exposure, and the other one was about ISO 1.5 at an 8 second exposure. And of course I'm using the new Seconic L308 that I got in the, this year, and uh, it only goes down to ISO 3, so you have to extrapolate for anything lower than that. So I've been in email correspondence with another photographer named Federico Pito. And he's been experimenting with this uh, reversal process using a less toxic bleaching agent using hydrogen peroxide and citric acid. And him and I have been emailing each other back and forth, uh, just kind of reflecting on our notes and our progress and some of the issues we've been having. And if you remember from the last video I did on this subject, I was having... Um, issues with the highlights appeared to be kind of mottled and blotchy looking. And uh, Federico has had the same problem and he came up with a breakthrough which I tested out today and sure enough it works so I give him the credit but his breakthrough was involving when we do the second uh, I should say, yeah, the second exposure, when we re-expose the paper after the bleaching agent, what we were basically doing is overexposing the paper really badly. And uh, what happens is the part of the image that originally received a lot of light, the highlights that in the negative are, are dark, that get bleached out, they don't get completely bleached. There are still some active silver halides in there. And what was happening, we think, is that we were overexposing the second exposure, the flash exposure, uh, so badly that some of those halides in the supposedly bleached out areas were actually getting more exposure uh, and causing this blotchiness. So his, uh, what he did is he did some test strips and he's using his enlarger as a light source 
for ex doing the second exposure under controlled circumstances. And I used his settings. I had my enlarger lens about 20 inches above the table. I used an aperture of about f8. And uh, it was plenty of light to refog the remaining silver halides without affecting the highlights. So let's go out to the dark room and I'll show you the chemicals and how I did it. Well, welcome to my crowded little dark room once again. And I'm going to show you uh, what I did with this new process. And I'm going to start, first of all, by simply describing the chemicals, uh, their dilutions or what, it, what they're composed of in the order that I use them. And then we'll go back and I'll, sh I'll describe for you the times, the processing times that I use. Okay. So as I've described to you in previous videos, I'm using these little three-drawer uh, cubed... Uh, tray stacks and they're big enough for four by five easily and they're actually just about big enough for five by sevens um, as i've described in other videos you have to use some weight on the back of the trays uh the back of the drawers because when you start pulling the trays out they want to get front heavy and they'll tip over so this is just counterweight you could use bricks or books or whatever um, safety handling the peroxide i use the face shield and gloves at least that when I'm in here. I don't want anything splashing in my eyes. So let's talk about the chemicals I'm using in the order that they're being used at and then we'll go back and talk about the times. So this is uh, Ilford Universal Paper Developer uh, diluted 1 plus 15. It's 300 milliliters of water with about 22 milliliters of liquid concentrate for a 1 plus 15 dilution. This is tap water. It's a rinse. I swap it out between every prints. I just dump it and fill it back up part way. This is the bleaching agent, and according to my notes, the bleaching agent is this current iteration that we're using is 175 milliliters of water with added to it is 125 milliliters of 35% hydrogen peroxide, and then we're adding two teaspoons of citric acid. So that makes a 300, approximately 300 milliliter volume. And then we have another uh, rinse tray with tap water and we change it out between every print. Then we have paper developer. This is just standard uh, Ilford or Kodak Universal paper developer. And then we have another rinse afterwards. And then we also have a holding tray, which I'll have a little bit of water in here as well. Okay, let's talk about handling uh, of the chemicals and the processing time. First of all, I have three sets of tongs, or three tongs. I have a developer tong, I have a bleaching tong, and I have a fixer tong. Um, so the paper, when it comes out of the, f the film holder after it's been exposed in the camera, it gets put into developer for a minute and 30 seconds. I let it drip for a few seconds afterwards, and then it goes into the first rinse for about 30 seconds. I, I, I pull it out again with the developer tongs, and I'll slip it into the bleaching agent without actually touching the bleaching agent with the, t with the developer tong. And then I'll agitate it continuously and let it process for three minutes in the bleaching agent. After which, I will take the bleaching tongs, I'll remove the print, let it drip over that tray, and I'll put it in the second rinse for about 30 seconds. And then with the same bleach tongs, I'll pull it out of that rinse, and I'll slip it into, the f in, uh, and I'll slip it into this tray, which is just a holding bath with a little bit of water in it. And I will then uh, agitate this tray over my sink uh, for about 30 seconds, just to make sure that a lot of the peroxide solution is diluted into the water water and then I'll dump that tray in the sink and I'll and I'll take the print out with my gloved hands and rinse it under water both sides front and back to rinse off as much peroxide as I can and then I set the print back face up in this tray and then from there I take it over to my dry side and I have a paper towel under here and I sit it right underneath the enlarger and I have the enlarger set for uh, the pre the second exposure time which for me was eight seconds and I, my lens was at f8 and I uh, hit the switch and I let it expose the uh, print the second time and then from there I take the tray back here I take the print out of it that's just wet and I slip it back into the developer again and it gets developed for another minute and a half. 
gets another rinse for 30 seconds, again using developer tongs, and from there it gets put into the fixer bath. And of course I don't touch the fixer bath with the developing tongs. And it gets fixed for two minutes. And after that fix, I use the fixer tongs, I pull it out and I slip it in this uh, uh, final rinse. Rinse it about 30 seconds and then I have that other container this one right here, I'll put the I'll put it into and take it outside and rinse it underneath the tree. Once the uh, prints have been adequately rinsed for let's say five or ten minutes, I'll take them in back into the dark room. I'll I have this um, <coughs> cutting board I've had for decades. I bought it brand new <laughs> back in the 19 I don't know early 1990s maybe. And all I've ever used it for is squeegeeing prints, and I have a, a print squeegee. But basically, you make sure it's clean and dust-free. You put the print face down with one corner of it, stick it over the rounded edge just a little bit so you can grab it later. You carefully squeegee the back side, and then you take a paper towel, you wipe off the excess water on the back side, and then you take a hair dryer that you only use for print drying. You don't use it for hair because you'll get particles of whatever, hairspray and whatever on your print. You don't want to do that. So a dedicated hair dryer, you dry the back side and then you carefully peel up the print with a corner, set it down over here, front side up, and then you squeegee it. And when the squeegee gets toward the end of the paper, you pull the paper away to the left so that that bead of water doesn't soak in underneath the paper and re-wet the back side and squeegee the other part, pick it up and then you're going to dry it again with the hair dryer in your hand and then you will put it into some paper or plastic sleeves for storage. And oh yes, I have a larger set of the same style of drawers big enough for 8x10 so that's how I'm going to do the 8x10 processing. I store these when I'm not using them, I store them upside down just so the dust doesn't get into trays as much. So this paper that I used for this test was Ilford multi-grade resin coated warm tone uh, RC paper and, uh, and it's a luster finish so it's sort of what you might call a matte finish. Now this was the first exposure that was a little bit darker at ISO 3 with my camera. What's really nice about this, I don't know how close this lens goes, but What's nice about this is the highlights don't have any modeling. There's no discoloration, no thing like that. They're just very, very clean. And you can tell from also the color of this paper, it's a slight sepia tone. This is the warm tone effect from the warm tone paper. It has kind of an antique look. Okay, let's go look at the second print. So first thing, there's two artifacts I'll mention. First of all, this large dark border on the one side. Sometimes what happens with film holders is you, um, the paper shifts to one end of the film holder and you have to remember to tap the film holder before you put it in the camera, which I failed to do. And the other thing that you might notice if I focus it is there is a little weird little mark on the uh, upper right corner and that is a tong mark from my tongs. I have these rubber tipped tongs that have a little grippy texture on them and apparently one of my tongs had some residual chemical that wasn't washed off properly so just another lesson about darkroom cleanliness but this was the print that I gave it ISO 1.5 uh, exposure to and um, boy this is a beautiful picture huh uh, I got the medium grays along the edge of the table the shadows are quite dark and I might be doing some more experiments on giving this paper an additional pre-flash. I did pre-flash the paper for uh, eight seconds under my pre-flashing light source, but I might double that exposure and try to brighten up the, the deep shadows a bit. Now keep in mind this is multi-grade paper, so it, it has the uh, the property of its contrast is sensitive to the color of light and because I was shooting under shaded north light from the windows of my patio room there's a lot of blue and UV and so it's going to activate that high contrast emulsion so I'm going to probably give it some more pre-flash in the future but what's wonderful about this picture is how uh, clean the highlights are all the highlights around the window frame and the bright sunny uh, lawn out in the back and then the, the highlights on the ribbon cover and along the segment of the typewriter. Everything is nice and clean and that's what I was hoping for. And of course the uh, 
uh, wonderful warm tone uh, color of this paper and the fact that it has that nice matte finish, uh, luster finish to the paper. And it's resin coated paper so it, the processing and the rinsing and the drying is all very convenient. Well, a good question to ask is where might I be going further with this process now that I've achieved these results? Well, uh, first of all, I'm using um, probably about a 15%. I haven't actually figured out the calculation. This was according uh, to Federico's calculations. Uh, um, a less than 18% concentration of peroxide in the bleaching agent. So it's, it's less peroxide, much less uh, post second exposure. That's a very controlled thing. The other thing is I'm not exposing the the paper to room lights until after the uh, it's been in the fixer for about a minute. Remember on the previous videos, as soon as it came out of the bleaching agent, I would be turning on the room lights. And what that was doing essentially is making additional uh, second exposure, uh, exposing the paper uncontrollably uh, without even timing it or anything. So uh, essentially it's a darkroom process. You're doing the whole thing under red lights and you only give it that, uh, you only turn it, expose it to white light when it's, uh, when you're doing the controlled exposure under the enlarger and in my case. Um, so where am I going with this process? Well, it's actually right now, it's, pretty darn good. Uh, I would say this particular multi-grade paper, it's probably a little bit more contrasty than uh, Harman Direct Positive paper was, but not noticeably so. I mean, I think Harman would have had a little bit more subtle tones under this subdued lighting. So again, I'm going to have to experiment with some additional pre-flashing to get this. Uh, of course, this is a dark, dark typewriter, you know, so it uh, it doesn't uh, show up that bright anyways, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get some more pre-flash exposure. Um, the lifetime of the peroxide bath uh, will be an issue. It's probably roughly about the same as the lifetime of the developer, I think. But I sure love the convenience of RC paper. It uh, rinses real quick, it dries real quick, and it dries flat. And you have such a greater uh, supply of finishes, I think, at least the same as with um, fiber paper, but you you have glossy, you have this luster finish, which I really like, warm tone, cold tone, and a lot of different manufacturers besides Ilford are making multi-grade resin coated paper. So there's a big source of all kinds of photo paper available for this process. So anyways, I'm really excited about the results. Um, as far as doing this process in my Afghanistan box camera. Um, this would take a while to process. Uh, a minute and a half in the developer, rinse, three minutes in the bleach, another rinse, and then a controlled exposure. You can't just pull it out and expose it to the to daylight. You have to control the exposure. And then um, um, another developer and stop bath and, and fixer. So there's not really enough room in a Afghanistan box camera to have all those trays. So <laughs> it's this is going to be a process that's going to be done at home in a studio setting and this begs the question, which this might be the next step I'll do, is I'm going to try this with 8x10 because if you're going to have uh, these kind of pictures done around a studio setting, you might want to consider portraits. And that means an 8x10 setup. So I might be breaking out my homemade 8x10 nested box camera with this. But until next time, this is my results with uh, reversal processing, direct positive prints. Stay creative, happy shooting, and have a great day.